one of the things I'm big on is building great culture. And so when I built Fishnet, uh, one of the things we all realized, I think, after we sold it, is what a great culture we had. And we knew we had something special while we were there. But afterwards, I can't tell you how many people came to me and said, boy, we sure do miss the culture that we had at Fishnet. And in my time off, I had time to reflect on that. And, you know, sometimes you're too close to the forest to see the trees and, and you don't appreciate things like that. And, and so in, the, in my time off, talking to other people, reflecting on what we had done at Fishnet, it really became apparent that the reason we were so successful was because of our culture. And I truly believe if you don't have a good culture in your organization, you're likely not going to be successful. You just can't force it. So you need good people marching all in the same direction. You need people that respect each other. You need people that respect the mission, the vision, the values that you've laid out for them. And if you have that, you can, you're almost guaranteed that you're going to have some level of success. But without it, you're almost guaranteed you're going to fail. And, and that, that word culture is really hard for a lot of companies to get their hand on. Right. You said you had an ability to, after you left, reflect on, on what was created. It's not easy to create a vibrant culture right. who's focused on the things that you talked about, the mission and the vision and the values. Um, do you think a lot of companies don't define those things and maybe Fishnet in what is now your newest company just do a better job of defining it? Or is it not only we define it, but we, we sell it? To the, 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 to the internal customers who are the employees. Yeah, you know, early on at, at Fishnet, we defined our mission, vision, values, and, and we, we, we would, you know, rework those over time as our mission changed, and um, certainly our values didn't change a whole lot, but um, sometimes you have to change those things with the time. But it was, uh, it was a roadmap to how we conducted ourselves and how we operated our business. And, we were able to establish that early on. And I, you know, if I reflect back, I think uh, mission, vision, values, you see a lot on the internet today. Right. But back then you didn't, and, and I believe it was through a, a consultant that um, you know, I got this idea that, hey, we need to create a mission and a vision and values. And you know, now it's just a lot of times something people put on their website. But you really have to live them day to day. And, and I think it really comes from the top. And, you know, it's how your leaders conduct themselves. And, you know, if they're coming into work every day and screaming and yelling and not having a good time being there, then the employees aren't going to have a good time. But if you're there, you're having fun, you're showing the associates that you're having fun, that they can have fun, and, you know, they can have a certain amount of fun along with the work, then I think that flows through. And then other intangibles like uh, giving to charity and, involving yourself in your community and that all flows down from the top and and that's the kind of cultures we have built in the past and uh, for me it, it's really just inherent to the way i am and the the way i conduct myself and and the way i want my companies to look and feel um, you know funny story recently i saw um, a ceo came into a company it happened to be a company i used to own and um, he's really struggling with culture. And, um, and it's, a lot of it's because of the way he conducts himself. And so his way of building culture was to send a definition of culture out to the entire team. And we all know what culture is. We, we, we know the definition of culture, but we don't, we're not gonna react to a definition being sent to us. It's, reality is it's the way the leader conducts themselves. And, and uh, in front of the employees, in front of the customers. Yeah, isn't that true? Yes. I mean, that's, well, and, and a culture is, as you were saying, it's, it's defined and then um, modeled through the leader, right? They will look right. at you and say, all right, so, so that's probably how I should be acting, which means I'm upbeat, I'm positive, I'm not complaining. All of these things that, you know, I've known you since 19... Well, probably 90, well, 99, 2000, right. maybe. And I think one of the great things about you is you're the same person outside of the company as you are inside the company. And your individual culture is one of fun, honesty, creativity. And I think that's, as an outsider, one of the things that made Fishnet 
successful is that you're congruent. You're the same person. Right. And, and it, that's important too, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. You can't go to work and turn on one set of values and attitudes and then leave work and, and be different, you know, because so much of the time we spend with our associates is outside the office, you know, so we're, we're in businesses where we all travel, we travel together, we're doing events after work, we're doing events with clients, um, with vendors, and so uh, you, you have to just conduct yourself the same way all the time, and, and you can't fake it because uh, when you stop thinking about it, then you're going to be acting different, right? So, um, you know, and it, admittedly at Fishnet, I don't know that I thought much about culture at the beginning. And it was something, and it was really special, and it was something that evolved over time. And I would say towards the end, you start, I started thinking about culture. And then as I built uh, another business on the side that I spun out of Fishnet Firemon, you know, we, th we thought a lot about culture. But I can tell you in this new business, Fish Tech Labs, we're really going into it, really thinking about how to build a, a really fun, crazy culture. And so it's really starting with the facilities. So we're actually in process now of starting to build a, a brand new headquarters building just up the street from where we're at today in Martin City, Missouri. And, and we're really excited about this building and as we're, we're building it, I'm involving the staff and, and we're really talking about and thinking through how we're gonna work in that space. And so we're looking at new office concepts and how people are gonna be created equally. And you know, one of the ideas I have is there's no assigned seating at the office. So uh, everyone's equal and uh, that day, if you wanna work in an office, feel free to jump in an office and work in an office. If you want to work at a cube, although there's not a lot of cubes in this space, yeah. but if you want to work at a stand-up desk, if you want to work in the kitchen, in the break room, wherever you want to work, feel free to sit down and work. And, and so we really want uh, a sense of we're all one team, everybody's created equal. You know, when the staff asked me what corner I wanted my office in, I said, I, I'm not going to have an office. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with all of you. And I think that's important. We, we kind of get um, set up in these ways where we start to differentiate different classes of employees. And I don't want to do that. At Fish Tech Labs, we're all A players. And so everyone's uh, treated, created equal and going to be treated equally. Uh, because in this venture, I really have the good fortune of being able to hire A players. So I was uh, looking back uh, just last night at the number of employees I've already hired in the past month and employees that are either on staff or going to be on staff um, uh, come January, I'm already bigger than I was at Fishnet in six years. So, wow. um, Because at Fishnet it was a true grassroots sure. effort and we couldn't hire until we had the revenue to right. support the next body. Uh, because of you know, past success, I'm very fortunate in this venture to be able to hire ahead of that. So my uh, thought process with this one is build the team and then go after the revenue. Whereas before and in, a, in my uh, days at Firemont too, a lot of it was go find the revenue and then build the team. So we're very fortunate to be able to do it opposite here. Yeah, well, and, and that's um, most startup early stage entrepreneurs face that challenge, yes. right? To your point is bring the revenue in, then hire the next guy. Right. And we'll right. sell something else and we'll, we'll hire the next person, That's right? right? And That's so, right. so uh, what's the benefit of this? Is it speed to market? Is it capturing this, this niche quicker? I mean, because it is a huge luxury you have. Yeah. One, that, one that you earned and fought for. Yeah, you know, it is time to market. And, and because we, we know that the time is right now for the cloud and where it's headed and some of these other technologies we talked about, IoT, SDN, SD-WAN, uh, they're all, Kind of buzzwords right now, sure. but they're the reality, and CIOs and uh, CISOs are talking about it, and uh, they're wanting to get educated on software-defined networking. And we've built an entire SDN lab right here in Kansas City, and we're, we're engaged with customers today, uh, working through different SD, SDN scenarios and SDN configurations, and reviewing different uh, pieces of equipment in that space. And 
we're able to do that because we can invest ahead. Right. And um, I wasn't able to do that in the past. So that it's uh, really refreshing. You know, you see it a lot where entrepreneurs go and they get a big pile of cash and, and they invest ahead, but they've never been where we've been before. Right. And so I think we are better suited because we understand both sides of the equation. One, building and growing without money and two, uh, building and growing with money, but it's my own money, so right. um, it's not someone else's. And, um, you know, entrepreneurs tend to create that, or uh, tend to treat that differently when it's not their own well, money. Yeah, yeah, I would say and so, right? I've been involved in some of those ventures. <laughs> you know? and so, right, right. so, you know, the, the best advice uh, I give to entrepreneurs in, in that area is treat it like it's your own money. That's right. That's right. Yeah, in this case, um, every dollar counts, right? Right, that's no, right. No wasting. That's, that's right. good.